linearization is the key to handling nonlinear systems. We're going to follow the same story as in Volume 1. Find the equilibria, linearize there, and then classify using what we know about linear systems. So let's linearize. Let's say that we have a nonlinear system of the form dx equals f of x or ex equals f of x in continuous or discrete time. Here, when I write x with an underline, that means the planar vector variables x and y. And when I write the right-hand side f of x, that capital F of x, splits into two components, the first output f1 and the second output f2. Now, this right-hand side, this function f, is a function with two inputs and two outputs. The derivative of this right-hand side is going to be the key. We're going to work with derivatives of functions of two inputs, two outputs. Such a derivative is a linear transformation. As you learned back in multivariable calculus, hopefully, the derivative is a linear transformation that transforms rates of change of inputs to rates of change of outputs. In the present context, these can be represented very easily as a two by two matrix whose entries are the partial derivatives of the outputs with respect to the inputs. Remember, columns correspond to inputs, rows correspond to outputs. We're going to use this derivative to linearize a dynamical system about an equilibrium, just like we did in volume one, same derivation as in volume one, slightly more complex notation. Let's let A be an equilibrium in our dynamical system, and let's choose a new vector valued variable, h, to represent the distance between x and a. h is like a perturbation away from the equilibrium. Now in continuous time, we have the induced dynamical system on h given by differentiating that equation, h equals x minus a dh equals dx minus dA. A is an equilibrium, so its derivative is zero. Get rid of that. Now I'm going to look at the derivative of x as being f of x, which is f of a plus h. Now I'm going to use a multivariate Taylor expansion to say f at a plus h is f at a plus the derivative of f at a times h plus terms that are of order quadratic in h and higher. That means if we ignore those higher order terms, we get an approximation. The linearized dynamical system dh equals the derivative of f at a times h. We do the exact same computation in discrete time, writing out the shift of h, eh, equals ex minus ea, that's f at a plus h minus f of a. But since a is an equilibrium, f at a is really a. Taylor expanding out f at a plus h, we once again get the linearized dynamical system. E h is up to first order d f at a times h. These are two linear systems. Notice that the linear transformation, the matrix that is used is the derivative of f at a, which is explicitly written out in terms of these partial derivatives of the right-hand side. And now we're all set, because once we've linearized the dynamics, we know how to solve linear systems. In continuous time, if dh equals df at a times h, then the solution h of t to a small perturbation away from that equilibrium is what? It's the matrix exponential, e to the derivative of f at a times t, applied to the vector of initial conditions h naught. In discrete time, e h equals d f at a times h, what's the solution to that? h n is that derivative, that matrix to the nth power applied to h naught. Everything that we learned about linear systems is going to be applicable here using eigenvalues, using eigenvectors. That's it. We're all set.